data fetching in Next.js, and then a couple of things to look out for as well. So we'll cover both server and client side data fetching. So if we come to my running application here that fetches the data for this page, what you're going to see is that it looks like about how you would fetch data in just a basic React application to where we have some state up here. We use a use effect that runs on mount. On mount, we call this fetch post function. It fetches from the JSON placeholder API. If that is successful, it sets the post. And then here below, if we have our posts, we render them out to the page. One important consideration here is that we need to use the use client directive at the top of this page because we are using other React features within this component like use state as well as the use effect to run this on mount. So because of that, we need to make sure that this is a client side component. So if you need to fetch stuff client side in Next.js, you're going to need the use client directive at the top. And then you're probably going to use the use effect to run it on mount and then set some state within your fetch request and then also probably handle some either loading or error state. I think a slightly better way that I could have actually handled this is just having a single status piece of state to where the status of our post is either loading or error. So it kind of consolidates that state into one piece of state. I think that's generally a little bit better practice, but this will also get the job done just fine. So client side, probably going to use a use effect on mount, make that fetch request, set some state, and then you use the use client directive at the top of the page. And this, this is a, a way to do it. You might have to do this sometimes throughout your Next.js applications, and this is still a, a valid way to fetch data. However, Next.js recommends that you fetch data server side, or at least you first try to fetch data server side. And this is kind of how you do it server side. We can just make our component an asynchronous component right at the top. So export default async function data fetching server right at the top of the page we can await a fetch request check if that response is okay or not and then continue to render out the data from that fetch request so we don't need to use effect we don't need a set state it's much more kind of straightforward and it'll happen server side which means if we come back here if i refresh the page here you see that we get a little bit of a flicker on the page where for a brief second before the data comes in, it sets a loading state. And we see that for just a second here. But if I go to data fetching server, we see it renders. But if I refresh here, we see that we don't get any sort of flicker. It's just kind of more immediate, which is one of the benefits of fetching data on the server. And then not only this, but I just think from a code perspective, it is so much more straightforward to just have like these three lines of code here rather than having all of this going on or fetching data client side it's where you're like your setting state you're using a use effect you're managing the loading state as well so you just have more state you have a use effect it's a little bit more kind of complex code compared to just this right here just we make it an async component we fetch that data at the top level we check if the response is okay and then here we await the response.json and then render out our users to the page. So this would be fetching data server side. And this, of course, is fetching data client side. You can do both, but Next.js recommends fetching data server side for a couple of the reasons that I just mentioned. Code cleanliness, as well as you don't kind of run into that flickering issue and can improve performance fetching data server side. Now, what if, as I ask here, and I'm going to cover some future videos that go over some different patterns of fetching data kind of server side and fetching data generally. But what if you needed some client side interaction on this page, on your server side page? Should you convert it to like a client component and then fetch that data client side like we did here? Or what do you do in the case of needing some client side interaction on your server side data fetching page? Well, instead of making this all a client component here, say, say I had like a button here that needed to handle an on-click event. And anytime you need to handle like a actual user action, it's going to have to be client side. What we would do instead here is we would just create our own 
client side component and then import it into this page. So rather than having like this client side button and then on click, we will just pass a function that doesn't do anything. We'll just console.log clicked. This is not gonna work because event handlers cannot be passed or cannot be used within our kind of server component here. But rather than turning this entire component client side and needing to change all this data fetching into client side data fetching, a much better way to solve this is we can just create a new component. I'm just gonna name it client button.jsx, use client at the top, export default function client button, and then we can just return this button here like so. And then here we can instead just render our client button in its place. So then all this still stays server side, but we just kind of leave open a slot to render this client side button. And then here you can see we have no issues. We can click on this button here. And when I open my console, you can see that I was indeed clicking on it four times, clicking on it again. So that's all working as expected, but we didn't have to change this all to client side. So that's something to look out for. If you do do server side fetching, there's often ways that you can keep it server side, even if you need to do some client side stuff on that page. So just as a quick recap here for client side fetching, you're going to need to use the use client directive at the top of the page. You're likely going to need to set some state at the top level of that component. You'll likely use a use effect that runs on mount and then makes your fetch request. And then once that request is completed, either sets the data from the request or it sets an error, or you can alternatively fetch data server side to where you create an async function. You fetch your data just at the top level of your function. You could check if the response is successful or not. If it is, you can then call response.json and await that and then render out your data just directly. And this is the recommended approach from Next.js. Fetch your data server side. And then if you do need any client side components, you can create those and then just import them into your server component rather than turning all this into client side code. So those are the fundamentals of fetching data client side and server side in Next.js. We're gonna get into some other patterns here in future videos, but let me know if you have any questions below.